Welcome to the FCICA product webinar series. We are pleased to have Brian Rathman of Bona with us today. Brian, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today. I'm Brian Rathman. I'm Senior Territory Manager for Bona for the Rocky Mountain region. And I'm pleased to present our adhesive uh, webinar today. Quick background on Bona history. Uh, there's three main things that Bona is uh, focused on. That's environmental concerns, training efforts, and waterborne finish. Along the training efforts, uh, we are, our philosophy at Bona is that we are a training company. We have 14 RTCs, which is a regional training center scattered out through North America. Uh, and, and in those uh, training centers, we host 24 four-day schools, and then we have over 100 two-day training seminars that we actually go out to bonus certified craftsmen and teach them our product lineup in a two-day format. And then, of course, we also have hundreds of on-site demos with contractors throughout the year. The history of Bona uh, originally uh, began in Malmo, Sweden. Uh, he was started in a little coffee shop uh, making waxes and then kind of got into the uh, products to take care of hardwood floors. And then in the 1980s, we began uh, bringing it into the United States. And then in 1987, we became an official subsidiary to Bona. A brief history of silene technology, and this is going to be the focus for today's presentation. Um, as you guys can see on the screen there, the, uh, the main time blocks of uh, silene technology and how it came about uh, in the wood floor industry. Uh, a quick synopsis of what silene technology is, is basically silene is a silicone-based product. Um, it's an adhesive promoter a moisture rejector, and it won't etch pre-finished floors. So extremely valuable for doing modern wood floors in today's environment. And this slide here is really just depicting what, how the uh, adhesives probably started uh, for uh, the wood floor industry, tar back, which came from the roofing industry. And then it evolved into asphalt. Now, obviously, asphalt uh, in today's environmental concerns with uh, homeowners being highly educated on what they do and do not want to have in their house, asphalt would not be something you would want to have into an indoor environment. This slide here is the one of the original NAFMA North American uh, Floor Manufacturers Association Installation Manual which covers talking about using cutback adhesives, asphalt, mastics, uh, embedded in screed. So this was how the original systems were built for hardwood floors to do <clears throat> wood flooring over a concrete type product. And then going from the cutback to chlorinated adhesives, um, Obviously, there became uh, many safety concerns and issues with asphalt adhesives in environment. Uh, the cutback adhesives were mineral-based, so highly flammable. And then, of course, they also had some asbestos in them, which, again, we all know is uh, not something we want to have in today's home. Um, so this led to different type of adhesives in the market back in the 1960s. And then in 1995, the federal government ended the ability to have these cutback adhesives and so it caused a lot of panic in the wood floor industry and that contractors like okay well now what are we going to use in order to adhere the wood floor product into environments where they have concrete this led to the development of urethane adhesives um, they're extremely strong adhesive um, however, that they do um, don't have a lot of elastic properties to them. Uh, if anybody's ever had any experience with uh, liquid nails or subfloor adhesives, uh, that's a urethane-based adhesive, so it holds extremely well. However, 
It doesn't have a lot of elastomic properties, so it can't move and expand and contract with the normal movement of a, hard, of a hardwood floor. So, <clears throat> Bona has a complete lineup of the uh, adhesives. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with the Bona lineup as far as our hardwood floor cleaners out on the market, which can be found in a lot of different uh, areas. And so, Bona has developed this uh, silene-based technology, and this is our lineup here. We have our 859 and our 851. Those are our pale adhesives, <clears throat> which is what most contractors are very familiar with from the urethane world. Uh, the difference between the 859 and the 851 is the pale size, 859 being a little bit larger, and the 859 has a thickening agent in it uh, to make it have a little bit a higher ridge stability. And when contractors are working over a surface that has an irregular surface profile, uh, the 859 is a better product. It's mainly used in slab markets, uh, but the 851 and the 859 have all the same inherent uh, moisture rejecting properties, adhesive properties, and sound dampening properties. And the next jug to that is our R540. This is a new product that we launched, which we'll have a slide here in a couple minutes. Then we have our sausage glue, and then our 880 uh, adhesive for it's kind of our multi-purpose adhesive. So why Bona adhesives? Uh, traffic, that is our premier hardwood floor finish. And so we consider our adhesive lineup the traffic of wood floor adhesives. Uh, there's a lot of manufacturers out there that we compete against in the finish world and they're always comparing their products to traffic. So in the hardwood floor industry, when contractors are referring to a one component or a two component finish and what's the best on the market, uh, Bone has really set the standard for a high bar for our adhesive lineup. And again, it's based on the silane technology and it is GreenGuard certified uh, to meet requirements for those types of projects. And it's part of the bonus system. Uh, the bonus system, it's just, it's a very great story to tell and that you can have the bona adhesives underneath the wood flooring and you can have a finished floor on top with the traffic product. And then of course you also have the floor care to maintain that finish. So basically we have all the products designed to build a hardwood floor system. Uh, we have everything except for the wood itself. Testing a slab for moisture, there's two recognized methods, uh, qualitative, um, as you can see, if it looks dry, smells dry, it must be dry, and then quantitative, which is the NWFA recognizes two tests. Uh, give you an idea of where contractors can get into a little bit of trouble when it comes to looking at a slab that's an aged slab and whether it's dry or not. A perfect example is our own new facility here in Inglewood, Colorado. Uh, the facility, uh, the building itself was built in 1974 and it had a six to eight inch slab underneath. So most people coming in would be like, well, it was built in 74, this slab must be dry, has no moisture in it, we can go ahead and glue down a product. However, when we were doing testing here, we discovered that the relative humidity uh, testing of the concrete slab produced results of 78%. So we had to take a little bit extra steps in uh, putting wood floors in our building. So basically the assumption here is just because the slab is 10, 20, 30 years old, that that does not mean that that slab is dry and can have a regular floor glued on it without testing. The two types of Moisture testing recognized by the NWFA, National Wood Flooring Association, is the moisture vapor emission rate, better known as the calcium chloride test, and then a RH test. Really, the difference between those two, uh, my analogy is that if we go back one slide here, your calcium chloride test is doing an X-ray of your substrate and your RH test is doing an MRI. So it's really giving you a lot of more information. And the other advantage to doing an RH test is the fact that these new test kits, you can have results within 24 hours. 
going back to your calcium chloride test, uh, those tests usually take 72 hours. In today's fast-paced building envelopes, uh, sometimes there's just not enough time in order to wait for that 72 hours, so a lot of times contractors are taking the risk by going ahead and proceeding with that wood flooring project and not having the correct testing done. Moisture sources are classified as natural or artificial. Uh, as you can see on both sides there, it gives you a complete rundown of what a natural uh, moisture issue or source could be and an artificial source. Bone adhesives, um, you know, as a former contractor, uh, the tear outs uh, due to a failure with adhesives can be extremely expensive. Uh, generally, uh, it's going to run anywhere between five to seven times the original dollar amount for a hardwood floor to have it torn out and replaced. Uh, you have to factor in that you have content manipulation, uh, upset customers, and et cetera. So there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you have an adhesive failure uh, due to inadequate testing or not using the correct adhesive. And bullet point number six there, we're talking about Google reviews. I am an NWFA certified inspector. And several years ago, I did a hardwood floor inspection that had failure. And after it was all said and done, the contractor reached out to me and he made a statement to me that stuck with me is that the Google reviews, the negative Google reviews that he received, he factored in that it probably cost his company about $75,000 in gross revenue over a six month period because of the negative feedback he had on just that one project. That doesn't even count the fact that he had a lot of the money spent on removing that project and or flooring and redoing it. Here's some bullet points that talks about the two organizations, um, the Starnet Worldwide Commercial Flooring and Fuse Alliance recently had a seminar, or not recently, but about a year, year and a half ago, and they addressed the two main concerns in the hardwood flooring industry, those being recruiting for training labor and concrete moisture issues. Now, I'm based in Denver, so my two main markets that I work in is Denver and Salt Lake. And both of those are considered high desert climates. With that information, it is still those are the moisture issues and concrete slabs are still the main topics of discussion when it comes to installing wood floor over concrete is moisture related issues. And again, high desert climate. So it still factors in heavily in those conversations. Measuring moisture in wood floors. Uh, these are the guidelines that the National Wood Flooring Association sets forth for readings. And quantitative testing should be done as well. Again, that's referring back to the calcium chloride test or an RH test. And again, as I mentioned, I'm an NWFA inspector. So when I go out on a job site to look at it, I'm always going to be asking for, all right, Mr. Contractor, show me your documentation on your flooring and your substrate, uh, did you take any uh, readings on that project before you started uh, installing the floor? Acclimation, that's a word that's uh, batted around in the hardwood floor industry quite a bit. Um, it is a not a matter of time thing. Acclimation refers to equilibrium moisture content. So we're always gonna have to refer to the manufacturer of the flooring. Uh, what their acclimation point is. Some engineered manufacturers are going to say, you just need to bring the flooring in, leave it in an original box, and it has to be on site for 24 hours, and then you can go ahead and install the project. Other manufacturers will require that the boxes be open on the ends to acclimate. So again, I'm always going to defer to the manufacturer of that wood flooring as far as what their acclimation time is and you know what their what their EMC is required. Concrete prep considerations, again, referring to the NWFA guidelines and what those tolerances are. 
uh, where it says there the Boss GSL2. That's just another device that you can use for checking uh, the flatness of the concrete. Uh, we don't like to use the word level. Uh, we want to use uh, flat or flatness. And then there's various products that can be considered bond breakers, uh, whether that's paint overspray, dirt, sealers, uh, all kinds of these things uh, can introduce a bond breaker so that the adhesive cannot properly uh, grab into that substrate. And does the concrete have to be grilled or grinded down or filled in? And lack of substrate preparation is the number one factor that counts in for success or failure of the flooring installation. Um, and that should be go without saying, if you have a subfloor that has a lot of waves in it or has what we call bird bass, so in an eight foot span that concrete's depressed a half inch or a three quarter inch or whatever it is, that's creating an area that can have a void so the adhesive can no longer uh, reach up and, and bind to the wood floor being installed. And repercussions of not doing proper slab work. You can have future issues, hollow spots, and so forth. I would like to touch on hollow spots. The NWFA, their stance on hollow spots is that there is no actual guideline for it, and it's not considered a defect by NWFA guidelines unless there is vertical movement of the flooring itself. But I would challenge everybody to go out to a general contractor, builder, or homeowner and have that conversation that they're complaining about a hollow spot and say, well, there's no guideline, uh, you don't have vertical deflection, so it's not considered a defect. Uh, that would be a very difficult conversation to have with any end user. Oriented strand board, otherwise known as OSB. Uh, again, it's very quick synopsis of what it is. The things I would like to touch on with the OSB is that there's a lot of different types of OSB out there. Uh, just like you can buy different quality of paint, different quality of hardwood floor finish, uh, there's different uh, categories of OSB. Some of the lesser quality OSB out there, they have a lot of air pockets between the chips of wood. So a contractor just doing a straight nail down to an OSB, he may only have 70% of his fastener attached to the wood and the rest of it is a micro air pocket around the fastener. So he doesn't have a lot of holding power in that OSB. So that's why here at Bona, we do recommend that contractors do a glue nail assist uh, using our 850T adhesive, which we'll get into in a couple slides. The Vantech is a new type of substrate out there. Um, it has a lot of advantages in the fact that it does have a coating on it to protect against moisture. Um, it's generally a much better product than OSB. Obviously, with that, it's going to have a little bit higher cost. Uh, the thing with Advantech is a lot of adhesives will not stick to Advantech because they do have a coating on them. However, we do have a product now that uh, we will get into in our R540 that can be applied directly over the Advantech to create a adhesive uh, or as a sealer between our adhesive and our R540. These next two slides, both cork and rubber. Underlayment, those are two products that a lot of architects, designers, and contractors themselves would specify into a product or a project in order to have sound dampening properties. The thing I'd like to point out to you guys is that on our R851 adhesive, that has a built in uh, sound dampening property. So our 851 adhesive has a sound rating of 71 decibels per ASTM testing E is an echo 492-092C. So cork and the rubber underlayment is not needed if a contractor is using our 851 adhesive. 
This photo here, folks, is just showing you some wood treads set into some metal skirting. Uh, our adhesive will stick to metal, so this particular staircase system was those treads were attached to the metal skirting there with just adhesive only, no mechanical fastener. We bond to terrazzo, ceramic tile, gypcrete, gypcrete over radiant heat, and also warm board. Uh, it's easier for us to actually describe to contractors what we don't stick to versus what our adhesives will adhere to. Um, the things that our adhesives uh, will not stick to is are basically plasticizers. So our adhesives all come in a plastic bucket. So products such as marble, uh, LVT, vinyl, uh, those type of products we won't stick to, but virtually just about everything else out there, um, our products will adhere to. And this is our R540 uh, primer moisture barrier. It's a two-in-one system. It's a roll-on application. And two coats of this product over concrete will give you maximum protection of 18 pounds on a calcium chloride test or 95 on an RH. If it's being used over a wood subfloor, whether that's OSB or plywood, then it is one application. So back on slide 18, which we can skip back to here real quick. Uh, actually, maybe it's that, not that right slide. Anyways, the NWFA guidelines requires that wood flooring that is three inches or less be within 4% moisture content of its substrate. And if it's three inches or wider, it has to be within 2% moisture content. So those readings have to be taken. So with the development of our R540 roll-on moisture barrier and primer, those readings are no longer relevant to a job site application. So a perfect example would be a flooring is brought into a project, it's acclimated, it reaches EMC, but it has a moisture content of say 6% and it's say it's a five inch wide engineered product. If the subfloor itself would be 12%, by NWFA guidelines, you would not be able to install that product. However, with the advent of the development of the R540, as long as the subfloor itself is below 20%, the contractor could then install that flooring at 6% with a moisture content of 12%, and be okay because of the fact that they have the properties of this adhering it to it. The other thing about the R540 is that it's not needed if a contractor is using a full surface glue down with our 851 adhesive because the 851 adhesive has a moisture protection in it already. Instances where a contractor might choose to use the 851 adhesive would be if you're installing a engineered product that's a thin product, say it's a half inch or nine sixteenths thick and it's six or seven inches wide, but the contractor or the specifier needs to have maximum moisture protection of 18 pounds or 95 RH, theoretically he could use the 851 adhesive with our MBP, which is a moisture barrier protection clip-on, but that's going to put on a very thick bed of adhesive underneath that floor. So from an installation standpoint, it may be a little bit difficult with that half inch or 9 uh, thick product. So now that contractor could use one to two coats of the R540, and then he could use a smaller notch trowel with our 851 adhesive so he doesn't have that thick bed of uh, adhesive to deal with. Uh, protects on um, moisture protection and saves time. And again, with the Advantech, because it has that coating on there, the contractor or specifier can put this into the program that coating that Advantech flooring with the R540, you don't need to abrade that surface. And of course, it's all it's compatible with all of our adhesive <clears throat> lineup. Excuse me. 
the 850T, 851, 859, and the 880. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a one component and requires no uh, mixing. When we're referring to the glue assist method, so that would be a, a floor that has a single bead of our sausage glue, the 850T run in front of the plank, using our sausage glue combined with the 540 moisture protection. Now you have moisture protection and you can do a glue nail assist. It has the same properties as our 851 adhesive in the pail. And it seals itself within the uh, gun and again has uh, excellent green grab. To give you a quick scenario of how effective this adhesive is, is I had a tube of this that I used about a quarter of it in January several years ago, and I put it up on the shelf in my van for about six months. At the end of six months, I was able to <clears throat> pull the adhesive out, replace the nozzle on it, and continue to use that product. If that had been a subfloor type adhesive product, uh, after six months of being frozen and thawed out, uh, I would have been throwing away that product. So again, it, it has extreme properties as far as being able to be reused many times. Again, we're touching on the trends within the industry. Um, you know, looking at improved stability of the uh, wood subfloors. Um, the biggest, I think, outside of moisture issues on job sites, the biggest thing that contractors and homeowners are complaining about are the squeaking and the popping. Um, I've seen new construction homes starting to get into 19 inches center uh, with their joist system. So as those joist systems have gotten farther apart, and thinner products and wider products, squeaking and popping becomes a major issue. So being able to do a glue nail assist with these engineered products has, has a lot of advantages. And here we go again, we're talking about the wider planks uh, from the Hardwood Floor Magazine edition of 2019. Um, and this is really zeroing in on the mechanical fasteners. Uh, as you guys can see here, 12 to 16 fasteners per square inch on a three inch wide plank. However, if you go up to a 12 inch wide plank, uh, you now only have three to four fasteners per square foot. And the industry's really shifted. I'm sure you guys have seen this as well, is that the average plank 10, 15 years ago in width was two and a quarter, three inch, a four inch, five inch would be considered a very wide product 10, 15 years ago. Uh, now five and six inch wide products are becoming the norm. So doing a glue nail assist with the 850T and either a cleat or staple uh, is gonna eliminate a lot of those issues of squeaking and popping. And Bona R880. This was developed last year. Uh, it's what we call our rescue adhesive. Uh, as a territory manager and, as well, and also the adhesive specialists that are scattered throughout the United States, uh, we're always recommending that contractors have this on, on board on their truck or van or trailer, whatever they're operating out of. Uh, the unique thing about the 880 is the fact that it uh, fits in the standard 10 inch 10 ounce caulking gun, so you don't need the special gun like you do with our sausage adhesives. Um, it sets up in about 10 minutes. And as you can see right there, it, it's talking about a five minute when misted with water. So you guys have all noticed there's been a theme here with our adhesives and that there's an R in front of every number that I'm referring to today. That R stands for reactive. So our adhesives like to react with water. It doesn't mean it's moisture cured, it's just reacting with water. So the introduction of water to our products cuts the open time down in half. So a perfect example for that would be, if you're doing a commercial installation. Uh, there's a lot of challenges with doing a commercial installation just from the staging standpoint and a lot of trades being on the job site. 
So a lot of times contractors are doing what we call starter rows or they're going from one room to the other. And as they go into that room, they're now in the middle of it and they've got to go in both directions. Well, using a standard urethane adhesive, they would snap their control lines, dry fit their product, put down their adhesive, set their product in the adhesive bed, and then they've got to wait for till the next day before they can uh, safely work off in both directions off that uh, of those rows of flooring in the middle of the room. With our adhesives, because it reacts with the water, contractor would do the same thing. He would snap out his control lines, dry fit his, his flooring, remove it, put our adhesive down. He could then could mist it with water very lightly, reincorporate it with the trowel so the water's mixed up with our adhesive, set his planks in there, and with the 880 or 850 sausage adhesives, within 10 to 15 minutes, that contractor can now work in both directions. So that's a huge time saver, especially on commercial flooring projects where deadlines are always very, very critical. And again, all of our products are zero VOC. Here's a very great story to tell. Uh, pail cost versus square footage coverage. Uh, if you're taking a four gallon pail of a urethane adhesive at $119 that gets 20 square feet per gallon, the cost per square foot, $1.48. Our three gallon pail at $94, and again, that's all going to be dependent on the distributor that the product's being purchased from, but $94 here for an example, 52 cents per square foot. The other thing that has to be factored into is the photo here of the wasted pail. Um, urethane adhesives inherently, when it's being used, say it's half used or quarter used or whatever is used out of that pail, those adhesives in the urethane bucket will develop what we call a puck. And that puck can be an inch to two inches thick or if it's close to the bottom, completely unusable. The beauty of our 851 adhesive is the fact that it comes with a foil liner. So when the contractor's done using it for the day, he puts the foil liner back in there. The next day, the next week, a month later, he peels up that foil liner and the waste on that would maybe be about an eighth of an inch thick versus two to three inches thick. Tying in with the bonus system. Uh, we at BONA, we do have a CEU uh, that's recognized by the AIA and the IDCEC for continuing education. This is our BONA 101. Uh, there's several employees at BONA, myself, Dave Darsh, Mark Raymond, and uh, Frank Capolino. So there's quite a few uh, BONA employees that are certified with NWFA to present the CEU. So if you have any questions about Having a CEU done uh, for various organizations, we're available to do that. And it is also HSW certified for one credit. The following images are just various slides of different flooring projects that were all um, attached to the floor using 851 system. So we have a beautiful uh, herringbone here. And then these next couple slides here are some uh, mosaics that were done. Again, these are projects that could not be just traditionally nailed down. Adhesive was required, and adhesive was uh, 851 adhesive was used on all of these projects that you'll see here in these couple slides. Again, beautiful artwork here, and these are all done with the. Uh, they also all top coated with the traffic finish. And then again, ROM pattern here. So again, all of these products projects were done with our adhesives. And then we have a complete team. In addition to the 14 territory managers that BONA has, we have adhesive specialists scattered throughout the United States and Canada. And then Wayne Highlander is the national sales manager for adhesive. So in a nutshell, you know, BONA is very system focused and we have a complete team to answer all questions and provide as much information as we can to our contractors and, and to you guys. Um, we're a very transparent company uh, and uh, 
Again, we really want to focus on the training aspect of our company because we strongly feel that the more we can educate our end users on our products, the better they are going to be able to specify it and have great success during the installation process. And that's all I have for my slides. Wonderful. So at this time, if anyone has any questions, uh, you can do that on the left side of your viewer. There's a tab that says Q&A. You can go ahead and submit your questions there um, for Brian to answer. And again, you can ask any questions about Bona, their history, their products, adhesives. Um, so this is a really good opportunity to have a technical representative all to yourself. Um, Brian, I do have a question here for you. Um, does Bona offer a full system approach to installation of wood flooring, and is that what they recommend? Yes. Um, that's the beauty of the of Bona and that, you know, most people recognize Bona from our hardwood floor cleaners. You know, we have a 68% market share of consumer polling of the Bona system, and they recognize it from our cleaners. But, uh, you know, we make our adhesives. We make our, our R540 sealer. Then our adhesives, we also make sanding machines, abrasives, stain, finish, and floor care. So we do have a complete system lineup. And we're very unique in that regard compared to other manufacturers that may only have finish or they may only have adhesives. We do have a complete system approach. Excellent. When companies or contractors use your adhesives, um, what kind of feedback do they receive? It's excellent feedback. Um, you know, I, I actually have Trey Harrison in here with me. He's my counterpart. He's a specialist for the Rocky Mountains and Midwest. And to date, knock on wood, every time we have sampled out, been on a job site with our adhesives, we have yet to have a contractor say, I'm not going to use your adhesive because of XYZ reason. Uh, most contractors, when they get our adhesives into their hands and start using it, they're like, I'm never going to look at any other adhesive other than Bona. Wow, that's great. Is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience about Bona, their technical reps, their support system, anything that our audience should know? So the other thing I'd like to touch on here, guys, would be uh, the advantage of using our adhesive with the siling technology on pre-finished floors, uh, whether that's a residential or commercial project. Uh, the number one, outside of moisture issues with the, with the floor, the number one complaint that contractors get, and, and I've been doing this for 27 years, is that they do a, a full surface glue down or even a glue assist system. Uh, when they get done, the consumer is looking at all these little glue smudges all over the floor. Uh, the contractor comes back in. There's anywhere from five to 1,500 pieces of blue tape on that floor, and they're glue smudges. And the contractor starts to take care of that with mineral spirits or whatever. And the urethane adhesives etches that pre-finished floor. So the beauty of our adhesives is that the contractor can install that floor. If he does get adhesive on the on the face of that pre-finished plank, and no matter how careful a contractor is, it's going to happen. Um, by using a bone of microfiber cloth, he just lightly buffs on that, and that adhesive will release off that pre-finished plank. It will not etch the surface. So you go from 1,500 pieces of blue tape, for example, on that floor of glue smudges to none. Uh, that's a fantastic story to tell. And it also gives the contractor extreme confidence that he's not worried about marring that floor because if that floor does get marred, it's either going to require a board replacement uh, or a recoat of that floor. And if it's a pre-finished floor and a recoat, a lot of times that's now going to void the warranty from that pre-finished 
flooring manufacturer. So being able to just clean the adhesive up really quickly and then providing that con the consumer with the proper uh, bone of hardwood floor cleaning products to maintain it uh, just tells a great story. That's fantastic. I am not seeing any other questions coming in right now. Um, so if anyone does send me something later, of course, I'll pass that along. Um, but on behalf of FCICA, thank you so much, Brian, for presenting today's webinar sponsored by Bona US. Um, it was great to have you join us and share all of your knowledge and expertise. Thank you, everyone, for your time today. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, if we have any SIMs on the line with us, you may now navigate to your education credit profile and submit credit for this webinar. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great rest of your day.